So welcome to another episode of ADTA Live. This is the series we have been running in the, in the uh, during the, the COVID situation to try to stay in touch with our, our friends out there. Um, tonight the subject is going to be concealed carry, which is a real popular subject. You know, there's millions of people buying handguns right now, and a large proportion of them, that's really their major interest. Let me let in John. Okay, so um, the way that this is going to work is that uh, Jeff Bickford, who I'll get him on screen in just a second, is going to be our presenter. Uh, he is an ADTA instructor. And then he will give his presentation, and then we will have a question and answer period. And when that starts, I'll take over and I'll be. Um, telling you how that works. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to put Jeff on full screen. And this is Jeff Bickford. Take it away, Jeff. All right, thanks, Ed. All right, so uh, today's presentation is going to be about choosing the right concealed carry option for you. Um, so when we're talking about concealed carry specifically, we mean Concealing a firearm on your person where it is not visible to anybody else. Um, main purpose of concealed carry is, of course, to have a substantial means of self-defense for you at all times um, without drawing unnecessary attention. So uh, the lesson here, we're going to just basically provide you with uh, a series of options to consider. Keep in mind, there is no one-size-fits-all for everybody. Uh, you know, may work for me, may not work for you, and vice versa. Um, so there are some uh, additional ADTA videos that you can look at online, specifically the core concepts seven and eight are presenting from a holster and selecting your first handgun. I would encourage everybody to um, go look at those as well. Um, safety, I want to talk about safety briefly. Uh, you know, we always beat in the, the firearm safety rules. Uh, when you're practicing drawing from concealment at home, and everybody should, uh, keep in mind the same rules apply. You know, always know your target, know the safe direction, your finger indexed, uh, don't point anything you don't want to destroy. Okay, with that, we'll, uh, we'll move on. So I, I talked about concealed carry. So first off, I'd like to um, uh, go through a couple of terms. Uh, we distinguish concealed ver carry versus open carry. Uh, concealment obviously means the firearm is not visible to others uh, to see. Uh, open carry means that the gun is clearly visible to anybody uh, that walks by. Um, I want to point out that uh, in the state of Washington, concealed carry, I'm sorry, open carry is legal. You're legally entitled, as long as you're uh, legally allowed to possess a gun, you can carry a pistol on your hip and walk into a place that is not prohibited. Um, I'm not gonna go over all of the prohibited places, that's a completely other topic. Just be aware that um, you know, there are some places like government buildings and such. Uh, everybody needs to go do the research and, and understand where you can and cannot carry a firearm open or concealed. Um, so that, that is ultimately up to your responsibility. Um, so one last item on um, open carry. While it is legal in the state of Washington, we typically do not recommend uh, people open carry uh, because there's a lot of people that just don't like guns and don't know the law, and you're probably going to get a lot more attention than you want. So if you're out in a rural area, someplace in western Washington, people may not bat an eye, but um, definitely on this side of the mountains, uh, you're, you'll get somebody's attention. Okay, so we'll step through. So I'm going to toggle back and forth between uh, some presentation stuff I'll show you here and a uh, Slideshow. If I can do this properly, I'll go ahead and share, which it's not letting me do. Let's try that one more time. Okay, 
So y'all should be seeing the cover slide here. Okay, so this first one is gonna be kind of busy, but I throw it up there because all of these things are really something that, uh, that you want to consider. Um, over on the uh, left here, we'll start with the gun itself. Uh, you know, there, there are different actions on the gun, whether you have a revolver or a single action or a double action semi-auto pistol. Um, you know, some of these may come into play in the type of uh, holster or carry option that you have. Uh, it's not something to be um, overlooked. Um, cost, well, obviously <laughs> guns aren't cheap, but they are, uh, there is a fairly large range of, of options from decent ones, you know, just under $300 up to, if you want to spend $1,500, you can find a, a good one there. Round capacity, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a big one there. So you know, typically on your micro compacts and stuff like that, the first thing you're gonna give up is round capacity. You can get down to some guns only hold five rounds or so. On the other hand, you get up to larger, uh, larger rounds uh, upwards, or larger magazines upwards of 18 or 20. So this will be something to balance out. Um, caliber. Caliber is an area of heated discussion. Uh, uh, most people accept that 380 ACP is pretty much the bottom line for self-defense caliber. I don't recommend going anything lower than that. You just don't have a, a, as much energy below them. Um, nine millimeters, the next step up, that's uh, you know, wildly um, popular, common. And then going into the uh, revolvers, you have 38 Special, 357. Um, you know, all those three are about the same size bullet, different, different rate, ratings and power. And then you get up into your 40 calibers and, and 45s. Um, you know, really, really big things, obviously. Bigger caliber, you know, you're going to have fewer rounds. So there, there are some of the trade-offs. Last bit is safeties. Um, a lot of guns, that, you know, have, have different types of safety. Some have manual safeties plus internal safeties, and you know, the internal safeties are basically there to, so it won't go off if it's dropped. There are certain things inside the gun that keep, keep the gun from firing unless you actually pull the trigger. Uh, some guns have passive safeties that um, basically by holding the gun like something in the grip or something on the trigger, it won't go off unless you're actively holding the gun in a manner that you want it to discharge. And then you have, you know, your, your external safety, like your slip on safety or e-cockers and stuff. Um, all of these are really important to consider in how you carry and for what you need to think about, you're going to have to disengage because uh, it's, it's like an orchestra, you know, getting to the gun, pulling it out, presenting it, um, lining your sights, disengaging safeties, They're all a little more complex. So um, that's, that's a bunch of the stuff on the gun. Um, and then that kind of carries us over to the size of the gun. As I said, round capacity, caliber, those are gonna be you know, kind of the primary things that drive the size of your firearm that you carry. Um, I'll move around in a counterclockwise position here. Concealability, of course, this is a big one. Um, the method that you carry, you don't want it to be overt such that the firearm is visible. Uh, so as we go through, we'll see different methods are, are more or less concealable. Accessibility, how easy is it to get to? If it's down at your feet, it's gonna take a lot more effort to get down there versus if it's somewhere up around your torso or waist area. Um, clothing, how much do you have to wear to hide it? How much do you have to move out of the way to get to it? Uh, summer, winter, different layers of clothing, you know, all of that can be a factor. And then lastly, physique. And this is kind of where I, I want to get back to there is no one good solution. Um, somebody that's slender in nature, that likes to wear tight clothing, you're going to have uh, a lot fewer options than somebody who's maybe heavier set, really muscular, and, you know, maybe their clothing just uh, drapes and can help conceal the firearm. Um, all of those come into play, and I, I kind of overlap the holster here and the accessibility and concealability. This is where most of our you know, carry holsters really, really fall. All right, so I know that's an eye chart, but uh, I wanted to at least get everybody um, exposed to that. 
Um, so let's go into, there we go. Hopefully y'all can see me. Okay. So um, first time type I want to talk about is outside the waistband. So this is probably one of the most common ones that you'll see. This is uh, what most people carry, uh, how they carry in our um, live fire exercises. What do we mean by outside the waistband or OW? Well, that means the holster is a gun or outside your waistband. So I have an example here on me. This works and I cannot fall over. This is an example of an outside the waistband holster. So this is a belt loop type leather holster. I carry it at about a four to five o'clock position. Um, uh, it stays pretty well snug. This one is made for this gun. So it's leather, it's molded to it. And you know, when I've got my shirt over it, I can move around and you know, pretty much unless somebody is really looking for it, you can't tell it's there. So that's a standard outside the waistband. Um, position that you wear it uh, varies uh, anywhere from like a three o'clock, you know, straight off to your side, all the way back to maybe six o'clock, um, you know, right in the small of your back. And we'll get to that one later. Um, Benefits, uh, it's really versatile, versatile, quick access. You know, if I had to in a hurry, um, <laughs> balancing here, um, quick pull the shirt and you can draw the fire alarm. So again, you practice, you can do it, do it pretty quickly. Uh, if, if your shirt is open, you simply flip it back and draw the fire alarm out. Really good access. Um, it does require a cover garment. Um, if your cover garment is not appropriate, your gun could print easily and then it's no longer really concealed. And what do I mean by printing? So in this case, you can't really see the gun, but if the shirt were much tighter, well, that's a pretty good outline of a gun in a holster. And this is what we mean by printing. There's a printed outline of, of what you're carrying. So always keep in mind uh, of, of how you're carrying that that can be a fact. Um, so before we get off on this, and this is probably a good place to talk about the different types of holster materials. Um, like I said, this one is leather. And then uh, we have other types, which would be like this foam type holster. I use this as a good, bad example. Um, generally um, discourage these vehemently. Uh, for the simple reason, I mean, they're, they're pretty versatile, you know, they'll, they'll carry a variety of, of guns. This one clips to your belt, this goes inside the waistband. The bad thing about them is um, when you pull it out and draw, when you have to put it back in, there's nothing to keep it open. Um, so again, um, you know, that's better than nothing, but not much better than nothing. Stay away from these, uh, spend, spend some good money on, on a decent. Uh, another type would be uh, plastic. Uh, Kydex is probably the most common material you hear, hear of. It. It's just it's another plastic material. Um, these are very durable. I, I I generally like this kind. It's a outside the waistband. Instead of going through the belt loop, this is a, a paddle holster. And what we mean by paddle is this part right here is the paddle. This actually goes inside your pants and then the rest of it goes outside your pants. And then these little claws that you see here when your belt slides through on the outside, those keep the holster in place as you draw up. And pretty much something that aggressive, you can tug and tug, the holster is never coming out of your pants. A um, um, lot, of, lot of different styles of paddles. Here's another external plastic one. This one actually is a belt loop, similar to like the one I have here. Um, talked about leather foam, uh, retention devices. Um, okay, so what holds the gun in place? Well, uh, for most of them, it's simply gravity and friction. Um, the nice thing about the leather one that I have here is you know, when you tighten your belt up, it's tightening around it. I can, I can pull the gun out fairly easily, cover the garment on, unless I'm standing on my head bouncing up and down, the gun's not. Um, the other style, like this paddle holster I, I demonstrated, it goes in and it clicks. The gun's not going to fall out easy. All it takes is a good 
jerk and the gun will come out. Uh, so that's a friction style. Uh, there are other types uh, with, with added layers of retention. Uh, this one is both, you, know, you can tighten it up, it's friction, and it has a strap to keep the, the gun secure. So this is one more thing to keep someone else to get it from getting it, but it's also one more thing that you have to defeat to put your gun into action. So keep that in mind. This one, just flip the strap out of the way and pull it out of the way. Um, you know, to, my opinion, and that's all it is, is this is just one more thing to get in the way, get a good holster that, that holds the gun securely and don't worry about that. Last type I wanna talk about is um, a Serpa holster, where there's other, other terms for it. But these have a mechanical um, feature that you have to defeat to get the gun out. You cannot get this gun out of the holster unless you push the button. So push the button, it doesn't take much, but you know, you have, to, you have to exert some force. And then as you pull the gun out, one thing you'll have to notice is my, th my finger kind of slipped as I pulled it out. Um, this style uh, has been used and um, banned from some law enforcement simply because uh, poor training or just, you know, you're, you're in a situation, your hands are sweaty, whatever, your finger moves around, as you pull it out, transfers to the trigger, and you get a negligent discharge. So uh, we generally don't recommend this style. It's, it's a little more advanced. It takes a lot of practice to get good with it. Uh, I, would, I would personally recommend uh, staying away from these, but you know, if it's something that you want to pursue, definitely look at it and practice with it. Okay, so we talked about outside the waistband and a lot of the materials, a lot of this stuff will kind of flow in, into the next uh, few that we're going to, going to discuss. Um, next one will be shoulder holsters. Okay, so here's a couple of examples of shoulder holsters. We see here Tony sporting a nice downward pointing um, leather holster, which is uh, big enough to easily conceal a micro uh, or a, a desert eagle. <laughs> um, very large gun. Uh, you no, know, you can carry just about any weight because the thing is, is spread across your shoulder. So the one that I have under the jacket there is, is a lighter weight one. Although in this case, you'll notice the gun, instead of pointing downward, is actually pointing backward. So this style, you know, has a few more detractors to consider. For one, you're pretty much muzzling everybody that's behind you. If you're uber safety conscious, that, that you know, <laughs> might be something you want to not consider. Another thing is um, if someone knows you have it, they can simply reach forward on your arm and pull it straight out. Um, lastly is when you go to draw from this position, um, if you're not careful and lift your arm out of the way, you can muzzle your arm as you're going and basically sweep everybody around. So there's a lot of things to, to think about um, with that one. Um, it sounds like I'm, I'm giving it a bad rap. There's just, you know, there, there's more things that you really need to, to be concerned with. You can't carry a larger gun. I personally have used this holster in the wintertime with a, you know, medium jacket. It, it's quite comfortable. Um, I, I, I don't mind it. Uh, as I started learning a little more, I found other ways that uh, worked a little better for me. But uh, you know, just keep in mind uh, that as an option. Okay, and next we talked about outside the waistband. So what would be the logical progression inside the waistband? So um, inside the waistband holsters do just what they say. Um, here's an example, a little leather one for a smaller gun. Um, the whole holster goes inside your pants, except for... Well, this I'm in. I registered for all of them. But if you let my kid in, we'll you'll have one more in the audience. I, I, I think we uh, have some muting that needs to go on in the background. So um, this little clip here actually goes outside the pants and your belt rides right on top of it. So from the outside, that's basically, if you lift your shirt, that's all that you can see. Concealment uh, works really well. The little clip keeps the holster in place as you draw it out. I'll leave that where it is. 
Uh, one thing I didn't show you on that one is um, it actually had a wire frame right here that kept it open, unlike uh, these squishy kinds. Um, another inside the waistband. This is more for a full size uh, gun. Um, uh, this one is two part. The backing is leather. The shell is Kydex. Some of these actually you can change the shell out for different guns that you have. Um, so in this one, this will sit in about a um, four to five o'clock position like, like the leather one that I have the outside the waistband. Um, these hooks right here go outside the pants. See that there? There's two of them there. Belt goes through it. So basically, when you've got it on in proper fashion, anything above the belt is the only thing that sticks out of your pants. So better for deep concealment. Um, one thing you need to be concerned about if you're going for inside the waistband is get bigger pants. Uh, <laughs> because you're having to stuff a holster and a gun in there. If they're already snug fitting, um, you're going to be pretty busy. Um, this kind, uh, as bulky as it looks, are actually quite comfortable, uh, especially if you get one that, that has the leather backing. Um, it's quite flexible. Uh, I'm not saying you're not going to notice the guns there, but it's, it's really not that bad. Um, it's deeper cover, less potential for uh, anybody to see it or printing. Um, you know, some of the detractors there are is if you're in a seated position, maybe a little more difficult to get to. But again, with, with practice, that's not something you can't overcome. Okay, so we'll move on to small of the back. Okay, so this is more of a six o'clock position. So this is actually my first holster. I thought, hey, that's deep concealment. But um, you know, one thing I found on this is even with a sturdy belt, uh, that gun just wanted to flop around. Um, every time I moved, it bounced back and forth, and it looked like there was an alien coming out of my back instead of my chest. Um, it's not really, really comfortable. Maybe with a smaller gun, different cant, uh, it might work for you. Um, I just I wanted to throw it out there for exposure. Uh, also, drawing is a little awkward because you're having to reach further around and unless you, you're very conscious of where that gun is pointing when you're drawing, you, you could risk uh, muzzling somebody directly behind you and, and all the way around until you get it into the proper position to engage the threat. All right, enough about that one. Pocket holsters. All right, so they do make holsters that are specifically to put in your pocket. And if you're considering carrying a small pistol in the pocket, do not do so without a proper holster. Why? The holster keeps the gun uh, oriented in the proper position. It also helps mask the lines of it, so you don't print. The one that's showing on the left is actually uh, molded for that gun. Um, and you know, once you put the whole thing in your back pocket, it basically just looks like you've got a wallet uh, in the pocket. The one on the right is uh, more of a padded style. I'll show that one in a minute. It, it's actually got kind of a sticky texture on it. So when you put the gun in the holster, put the holster in your pants, reach in, gun's in the right position. The shape of it helps uh, break up the lines of the gun. You pull the gun out, the holster stays in place because of the uh, tackiness of the uh, outside of it. Um, so this is really good for, for deep concealment. You don't require a cover garment, but you are gonna to want to you know, have for pants that have a little bigger pockets and smaller guns. You know, you're, you're probably not gonna be carrying a 1911 in your front pocket like this. Okay. Uh, next one. Um, oh, you know, I missed one about the inside the waistband. So I'll get that out of the way as I talk about the next one. Um, and that is the appendix carry. So this is an inside the waistband holster. Um, you can carry a smaller gun or a full size gun here. Uh, one thing you'll notice is, um, it is in sort of a, um, you know, uh, sensitive area. Some people are Pretty nervous about this. Nevertheless, a lot of people carry like this and, and do so adequately. Um, just you know, as you draw the firearm out, you need to be aware of 
proper um, indexing as always. And we'll go right back in from here. Can't really tell it's there. Even in a seated position, um, I've seen people draw from these uh, without incident. Um, so the next one I want to talk about is, believe me, this is part of the, uh, part of the act. It's all included. <laughs> Belly bands. All right, so this is actually, probably can't see with the lighting very well, but this is just an elastic band. It's got Velcro on the side for adjustment here. They come in several sizes. Um, has a nice little uh, pouch right here. This one has, actually has a thumb brake uh, um, uh, strap for added retention. Pretty easy to pop the thumb and pull it straight out. There is even an added place for an extra magazine. So um, that brings us to another point is, when you are considering how you're carrying your gun, that's in the grading. Um, don't forget about carrying extra magazines. Uh, just like some of the other holsters, there, there are options uh, not only for your gun, but for your magazine. And a good example is on this side. Um, so here I have, and this is a paddle holster like some of these other ones. How we see the paddle is on the inside and then it just stays in place. That thing's not going anywhere. This one's got two pouches. Um, they also make some single ones that will go in your uh, front pocket or back pocket with just a little clip that holds it in place. So from the casual observer, it looks like you got a pocket knife from the little clip that's there, but it's a place to pull that magazine. So don't overlook the magazines. Okay, so um, what else? You want to notice this nice, beautiful shirt I'm wearing. Well. This one is actually equipped specifically for, you have your sticky pocket holster. Nice little place for it right there. All right, so if you'll notice, that's pretty bulky. Um, this does not work for me. This is a really good example. Uh, this shirt is too loose. Even a small gun flops around. I mean, it, again, it looks like the, it's like I've got some strange appendage here on the inside of my chest. Uh, they do make stiffer shirts. Uh, 511 Tactical is one brand that, that makes some nice ones that actually has a spot, a belt for spot on the inside. A little more rigid would probably help that uh, for me. Um, nonetheless, um, I'm told the colors look good on me, so um, it's still a good, good cover shirt. If nothing else. Um, as we remove a layer, you'll notice here, is actually another option. So this is more of an undershirt. You will want something over it. And there's little Velcro thingies where you can have another gun. Um, lefty or righty, these are nice ambidextrous. The other side, you'll want to carry your extra magazines. Um, this one's really, really tight. Uh, if you don't have a cover shirt on it, yeah, somebody can tell you that you've got a gun. So you really need to wear, wear a covered uh, garment or something. Um, the Velcro is better on some than others. I've done this in a demonstration before where I had one in there and just reaching over, gun fell right out. So <laughs> make sure you're aware of the size of the gun and, and everything that you're dealing with uh, in, that, uh, in that area. Um, pros, built-in concealment, um, you know, where the gun is, is you know, accessibility is just something you'll have to be used to. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to the camo case. All right, so, so this one's kind of dated, but uh, I'll put a little flag note on this at the end. This is called a sneaky Pete. So when these originally came out about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, you know, this was really kind of at the, when people still had PDAs like Blackberries that weren't cell phones or kind of that crossover. Um, it's like a cell phone case or a PDA case. You know, the problem is now if you order one of these, and they're specifically made for a certain certain gun, you can see this one's for a Ruger LCP, which is what I've got right there. Um, nobody wears cases like that. Um, somebody looks at it and says, yeah, this guy's a dinosaur, or oh, that must be one of those camouflage cases that has a gun in it. 
So I guess the nice thing about them is there you can carry them right out in the open. It's still concealed carry because you can't see the gun. You don't know what's there. Uh, they are limited to smaller guns. One thing I'll say about this is just in the last couple of weeks, I happened to be flipping through a magazine and saw an updated article for these. And they have some that have different logos on them, like first aid or other things that now it's not just that it's an old PDA or something like that. So it, it's still an option that's out there. You can get the, those to date, uh, you know, they come in different colors and such. Uh, it's kind of a novelty. Okay, I jumped into the fanny packs. Uh, let me go back to that. All right, fanny packs. That's uh, that's another option here. Um, you know, there's still people that wear fanny packs, so you know some may say this is dated, but uh, but they're still out there. There are some that are specifically made with a compartment. Uh, this one has a, I believe, has a zipper on the front that when you grab the corner and just pull outward, there's a compartment just for your gun. So important thing to uh, consider when you're using something like this, or if you use something like this is, wherever that gun goes, that's the only thing that goes into that pouch. Just like if you carry one in your pocket, the gun is the only thing that goes in your pocket. You don't want anything else snagging on that uh, when you get in there. So that's my point. All right, so next point is, Purses, not to leave the uh, ladies or guys who want to carry a European shoulder bag. Um, they do make specific uh, concealed carry purses. This is one that my wife had. It's rather large. Um, uh, they have a special pouch in them. Um, again, wherever the gun goes, nothing else goes there. So anytime you're, if you do consider carrying this is not an appropriate way to carry a purse that has a gun in it because somebody can steal that really easy off your shoulder. Some of the better ones actually have um, a wire, steel wire running through here so that somebody can't come up and regardless of how you're carrying it, you have it over the shoulder, this is obviously the preferred method. Um, but the ones that have the steel wire in here, they can't cut through it and take the bag, which some purse snatchers have, have been known to do. So where is the gun in this? This one actually has, the pouch in the back. Um, so if you're carrying it over your shoulder, you're in a situation, you may not even have to um, draw the gun. Get in on this case, um, I've got a very large revolver in here. Um, now I point out the revolver in this case because um, if you had to, you were in a situation where you didn't actually want to draw the gun, but your life was in danger, you actually fire right through the purse. Um, nobody will see that you drew the gun. Um, with a revolver, you just keep pulling the trigger. The cylinder will continue going. With a semi-auto, you'll get one, one shot and the slide because of the friction or everything in here, it just won't. The best chance is it won't cycle. Um, so you might say, well, geez, I paid $150 for that purse. Well, you know, what's your life worth? So if it comes to that, um, that's, that's an option. If you make smaller ones or smaller guns, um, good option there. Um, other considerations for purses is you've got to watch that thing like a hawk. Never let it leave your body. Don't set it down because somebody could just want to steal a purse and guess what? Now they got your wallet and your gun. So um, that's there's a lot of trade-offs on that one, but you know. Be aware that that's out there. Um, okay, so that brings us to, as we're working our way down. There we go. Ankle holsters. Y'all have probably seen ankle holsters before. Um, the style here, uh, if you can see on this side, um, actually comes with a garter. And uh, this is something you definitely want to go for if you're considering an ankle holster. Uh, what it does is goes up as your calf starts getting small around your knee, it holds it in place there. Otherwise, this thing is just going to want to keep walking down your, <clears throat> down your leg. Um, also, don't forget, 
uh, another holster for extra magazines, which is what I've got here on the other leg. One thing you'll notice in this case is, where is the gun? I'm right-handed, it's on the inside of my left leg. And that's intentional. Um, it's on the outside, it, it, it'll tend to flop around, catch on stuff. It's gonna be much easier to kneel down and grab it from the inside of your opposite leg than it would be the outside of your strong arm leg. Um, Generally, smaller guns, um, you know, unless you have a really big guy and have uh, really loose fitting pants. And lastly, so uh, they do make certain underwear that even has um, options for concealed carry. Um, the one that I'm showing over on the uh, left hand side there um, is uh, called undercover underwear. Um, so that has a special elastic uh, pouch in the back. There's even a spot for uh, extra magazines, um, one on each side. Deep concealment is basically a built-in uh, inside the waistband holster. There's no extra retention feature other than just having a belt or, or the uh, snugness of your pants. Um, there's another one um, uh, here they call a flashbang holster, and this goes over the brassiere in the center. Um, generally made for smaller guns. Um, you know, the nice thing about this is just the natural flow of your garment in this area will, will conceal the gun. It, it, you can't see it at all. Um, you know, the downside is it's sort of like having an appendix carry inside the waistband holster. It is in a sensitive area and some people may not be comfortable with that. Um, you also have, you know, a much smaller, smaller gun. So it, you're, you're trading off features like, uh, you know, gun size and, and comfort there. Um, and I am going to stop briefly just to show you, this is what that underwear looks like. See, here's the elastic pouch and another pouch for spare magazine, There's one on each side. Yes, I did wash those since I wore them last. So, um, you know, whatever you do, consider all of this uh, in, into any, any type of carry, um, uh, concealed carry option that you have. Um, you know, absolutely if possible, try one on. Um, you know, some of these are probably not the best to, to ask um, a retailer to let you try on, but, you know, some of the other styles, uh, any good retailer will, will certainly give you the option. Practice with it, you know, just don't be this guy. Um, you know, there's a right way and a wrong way, and I have actually seen people walking down the street that just had a pistol sticking out of their pocket. Trying to make a statement or whatever. Um, you know, it's it's uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely not the right thing. So um, let me just uh, wrap up a, a couple of items I, in case I didn't cover them. Um, yeah, always try before you buy if you can. Um, you know, I've bought a lot of holsters before online because, hey, this looked like a good thing. And then, you know, if you keep doing this over time, you're, you're going to be a guy that has a box full of holsters. And um, not necessarily bad if you have a lot of different guns, uh, but, you know, you might find that a lot of these you know, get tossed in the box and you never use again. So, you know, it's something good for a garage there. Um, think how you're carried what you're going to carry, where you're going to carry. Um, throughout the year, that may change. Throughout the seasons, where you're going. And don't forget, place to carry your extra magazine. So with that, that's the end of my presentation. I will uh, go ahead and turn it back over to Ed. All right, great. A lot of ground covered there. Should be a lot of, spur a lot of questions here. So. Let me tell you how the Q&A works. So if you move your mouse around on your screen, you will see a button pop up at the bottom that says participants. Then when you click on that, it shows a panel over on the right hand side of everybody in the uh, meeting. Now in the very lower right corner is a little button that says dot, dot, dot. And if you click on that, it will let you raise your hand. So if you raise your hand, 
and I will turn on your microphone and we'll go from there. So who, who wants to ask a question? Oh, come on guys. Kim, ask us a question. Let them show, how, show them how it works. Okay, so there Tim's hand goes up and I'm going to turn on his mic and take it away, Tim. I think, is it your mic coming on? It appears Tim is muted. Myself. There you go, okay. Yeah, okay. So this is how it works. Somebody raises their hand like I did and uh, ask a question. So uh, that little floppy uh, um, holster that you got that you don't like, I have one that protects my gun when I'm carrying it in and out from the, my truck. And no, the little floppy one, uh, you know, the, that, yeah, the foamy thing, yeah. So I, I have one of those, but I only use it for protecting my gun. And I oftentimes put it in my console and it protects the gun, it's safe in there. I don't use it to, you know, carry with. Yeah, yeah what do you the, think? The, the, the main thing we, uh, we, we definitely discourage is, uh, especially if you're coming to a live fire event, we're drawing and reholstering a lot. And the last thing we want you to do is fumble around with, you know, trying to get this thing back in all the time, especially if it's not, you know, if it's anywhere south of the, the three o'clock position. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying don't go get one of these, but um, this is kind of the bottom of the barrel and um, as far as holsters go, um, as Tim, as you noted, that may be perfectly adequate for, for a condition such as storage in, in a container in your car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any preference of particular brands, Jeff? I do not. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a brand snob. I've tried several um, that worked. Uh, the ones that I seem to keep coming back to are um, Bovis, Galco, um, Alien Gear makes some good ones. Uh, I've got several Galco holsters, but you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of different manufacturers out there. Um, some of them are based uh, in the in the Pacific Northwest, uh, um, you know, in, in our area. And um, you know, the nice thing about the Kydex ones is if you have a gun that they don't already have a shelf for, they'll make one for you. I, I've I've seen some of these guys at the gun shows, and they say, "Oh yeah, just bring it by," and and you know, they just do a mold impression of it. And wow, they have another one that they can sell, and and you have something that fits your gun. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Jeff. All right, Pat, you've got a question. I'm going to turn on your microphone. There you go. Okay. Um, you didn't talk about belts at all, and I know that I've, you know, I've been looking into this stuff. Um, especially if you have a outside the waistband, you have to have a good belt. And I know I don't. So, what recommendations do you have for belts? <laughs> that is an excellent question. I'm glad you brought it up because I had it in my notes, but. Um, so this is my normal like work belt. You can see this thing is, is pretty flimsy. It's really thin. Um, it's not very tall. Um, don't, you don't want to do something like that. Definitely get a stiff belt. Now I'll go ahead and see if I can. This, one this one's fairly well worn. Um, you definitely want something that's fills as much as the belt loop as possible. Uh, you want it to be stiff. Give me kind of general recommendations. This one is about an uh, inch and a quarter tall. Um, it's a little more rigid. I can make it bend, but it, it's fairly stiff. Generally, the stiffer the better, um, because um, you know some of these, especially if you have a a uh, band holster that just relies on the belt. Even a stiff belt, those things are going to flop around a little bit. That's why I personally prefer paddle style holster. Um, but you know, with, with a good stiff belt, um, you can make those work. Um, you know, here's an example of a nice tall one, but it's it's not a one. This is this is your flimsy. I would not suggest something like this if you were just using it for a belt loop style holster. 
Okay. Thank you. All right, John, you've got a question. Let's see if I can turn on your mic. Here you go. Thank you, Jeff. Good, good presentation. Um, I have yet to find an inside waistband holster that that feels good or maybe I know I haven't tried all the the varieties out there and can you is there any recommendations you can steer steer me toward? Um, yeah, so I've got so this was the one that, that I dropped earlier. This is a Galco. This is for a smaller gun. Um, more of an appendix style, but you know, um, yeah, I guess it, it's really intended to be an appendix. You could wear that something like that at a, at a um, you know a five o'clock position. Again, this one has the wire frame around it. This one's made by Galco. Um, that's decent. I, I carried that appendix on a on a forty five uh, subcompact. Um, again, Alien Gear. They make some really good holsters. They're uh, you know they're some of the more affordable ones. Um, the other one I had is uh, Galco, similar style. Um, this one's leather. Um, most of these are pretty adjustable. You can go through this one. You can actually punch where you want the, the different places on the shell. The cant isn't right for you. Um, the location, um, you can also adjust the cant with where you, you put the uh, belt loops. These are a little more flexible. This one's got individual holes already drilled in it. You can see here uh, for the, the belt clip. This one's a little more rigid. Um, you know, both of these work really fine. Uh, I, I can't really recommend one versus the other. Uh, you know, unfortunately, something like that, you almost really have to try to see what it feels like. All right, Wu, you've got a question and I'm going to there you go. Yeah, I got a couple of uh, comments, really, not so much questions. There was the question about the belt. Uh, there are belts that also have real thick leather, but in between is sandwich a piece of, of metal, stainless steel, so it prevents it from sagging. And it's by Bigfoot. It's uh, Alien Gear holster. Uh, Ashley has a link. They used to make it for Alien Gear. And you go down to the uh, the bottom of the page, usually it says belt, and they'll have a link to Bigfoot. Then they're out, out of Idaho. You can get the belt very quickly. Uh, the other thing, too, you're talking about those little foam holsters and you know, any of those holsters you have. Uh, dry fire at home, drawing it out, you know, whatever it is that you're going to be using, and test it out to see if it works or not. That's really a, a good time to do that before you go to a live fire event. So those are my comments there for you. Good comments, thanks, Wu. Right. Okay, we have any more questions? Well, it doesn't look like so. Thank you again, Jeff, that was a great presentation. All righty. I especially like your setup. I've got to tell you this on camera here that with the step stool and where you get up where people can see that that's really been effective. So thanks. It may look organized from there, but it looks like a hot mess from here. <laughs> but it's off camera, right? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, we've got another show coming up next Monday. Uh, watch the uh, Sunday bulletins that come out in your email. So thank you for attending. Why doesn't everybody wave goodbye to Jeff? And we will see you all soon. Thanks again.